fashion items I stopped buying. In this video, I will share specific clothes and fashion items that I actually stopped buying and I will explain why I stopped buying them so that you can be wary and perhaps help with your decision making when out shopping. Non-leather shoes. They are uncomfortable and won't break in. Ladies, this is the most important transition that I recommend to you. Unfortunately, some retailers don't even offer leather shoes in the entire store and you don't even know it. Let me help you out here. Go online to your favorite retailer and search for leather shoes. See how many pop up. They might also have full leather advertised. That's the same as synthetic. Click on the pair you like and then scroll down to details and check in the description if it's leather or man-made. Done. This change has saved me countless blisters. I literally can't count them because I haven't had the need to wear bandages in my purse for years. And that says a lot. I used to fill up my purse when going out and I was a woman who had spare shoes in a trunk. Now leather molds around your skin and will stretch to fit your own unique measurements. Man-made synthetic materials will never ever do that. Non-cotton t-shirts. When it's time for teas, cotton is one of the most breathable materials out there along with linen. Now, linen looks a bit more casual to me. Cotton, on the other hand, when steamed, it looks very polished, especially the thicker Supima cotton. They're not $3 t-shirts, but they're very well made and look like $100 shirts. I assume, I don't know, I never paid $100 for a t-shirt. I wear these LB ones. They have options for short and long torso and plenty of nice pastels and elegant monochromatic grown-up colors. Drapey blouses that have no shape. These are the tent-like tops that flow around you, are thin and probably polyester-like, and can swallow you up. I don't find these flattering on me at all. They add extra volume, and who wants that? I mean, I definitely don't. I also have a slighter, bigger chest than I used to before kids, and I keep feeling like adding another layer would make my entire torso bigger, and most importantly, the waistline is gone. There is none. Hiding the waistline is aging. Even if I'm bloated, which happens a lot, I either cover it with a strategic open blazer or I wear a contrasting belt to cut the trunk size visually. And a little plug in here, if you haven't seen my short torso video, I will link it down below for you. You might wanna watch that next. It's very, very informative on how to dress if you have a short torso. Loose baggy jeans like the mom jeans or boyfriend jeans not flattering. These again add volume to half of the body or not sexy or flattering in any way. Even on models, I don't think the style looks good. Here it depends on the activity you wear them for. A smart casual look, straight jeans are just as comfortable. For a relaxed sporty activity, even joggers need to fit and not be stretched out and loose. I can't think of a look where it would be acceptable to wear ill-fitted jeans. Mid-rise pants are not flattering on me. This is very straightforward. I have muffin tops, okay? I think most of the population with any amount of fat on the hips has it. And if you put on a pair of pants that cut right through the middle, yeah. Let's not even talk about low rise. I used to wear them when I was a teen and had zero fat. No time to dwell on the past life. <laughs> <laughs> Textile white sneakers that are not washable. And I say white because to maintain white, I like to bleach them. Now these shoes get dirty so fast, I just need to look at them and they get stained. I've tried even the washable ones, but they don't look the same once you're stepped on. And yes, with small kids, you get stepped on a lot. I learned to just wear darker shades like black or navy on the weekend. I saved the white sneakers for I'm doing an activity solo. Joggers. Every time I go to Costco, I see newer versions of athletic wear from tights to sweatpants, lounge pants, whatever shape you wear. I have so many, too many. I just don't even look at them. I'm curious, how many pairs do you have in your closet? I just have to stop buying them. <laughs> pajamas, same thing. There's an abundance of pajamas with cute new colors
colors being released all the time, especially during holidays. No, we don't need more pajamas with every holiday theme. Just move on. <laughs> Jeggings or pull-on pants? You know, the fake jeans or fake slacks or fake trousers. From synthetic to silk, they might be comfortable, but they don't feel well made. Sure, get a pair if you want to wear them with a bulkier top or sweater, but I just don't look at them or shop this style because it doesn't look or feel elegant to me. Elastic is man-made and not very elegant in my opinion. Dresses with chinched elastic band waistline. This trend was all over summer 2022 and I still see them now. There's something about this style that looks so cheaply made to me. It's not enough that dresses nowadays don't have lining and are made of polyester, but to not even bother with a decent tailoring and just toss in a universal one size fits most elastic band doesn't do anyone favors which is a shame because i see brands that normally i buy from and they carry this style and it's such a turn off i look forward to the trend moving on as well sale items but wait it's not what you think you know people are usually concerned about overspending and trying to get a bargain let's say a piece you might like and then you compare it to full price and see how much it was discounted. I mean, it's a valid point, but now that I do a lot of research for you ladies for the trends videos, I look at what are the newest releases and inevitably the first things that pop up on any page include sales. And let me tell you firsthand that these items on sale are either past season or outdated, which is okay if you don't care about the latest trends. But I also noticed that these sales have not so great reviews. They are leftover stock that either didn't sell well or people returned for whatever reason. You should take this into consideration. I do. When you spend your hard-earned money, you want to make sure it's not a waste. And by the way, before you say that, well, Paula, some brands might have overstocked on these and they just didn't sell yet. I've also seen these items fly off the shelves within minutes of them being put in the cart. What I'm trying to say is that the good ones, the good brands, good pieces are not on sale for long, which leaves the rest collecting dust for the season. I am now very skeptical about them. Polyester, and not to be judgy here, probably, you know, half of the items in my closet are still polyester. I can't just throw it all out and buy sustainable brands. That in itself wouldn't be sustainable. But when I like a piece online or in store, the first thing I do after assessing the color and design is the material. There's a percentage composition breakdown on the inside label. The moment I see the majority of the consistency is polyester, it's a hard pass for me. And I'll tell you why. It gives me blemishes if it's in direct contact with my skin, especially while layering winter. For t-shirts and warm weather, they're not breathable and I sweat even more. Overall, for me, it causes more problems than it solves. Dry clean only garments. Now these just sound high maintenance. I think I've been to the dry cleaner a handful of times in my life for wool coats and that's it. <laughs> I'm sure exquisite clothes need special care. I'm just not at a point in my life where I want to allocate funds to have my clothes clean. You know, the super duper washer and dryer with 20 plus settings should work well enough. Extreme case, if I really, really like something, I would hand wash and air dry then steam. Pieces that don't match with anything in a closet. You know, these are the museum exhibitions. <laughs> you know, the pieces that are so unique that you need to think for 40 minutes before deciding what to pair it with from your closet and it's still not a guarantee that it works, you just gave up trying. <laughs> I know, I know the colors in my closet, what works and what doesn't work. If the color doesn't exist in my closet, there's a reason for it. No need to rehash the past with new experiments. My skin tone has not changed. Tops that have the armpits exposed. This is an easy one. I'm so self-conscious of body odor. I smell everything and I'm just aware of smells around me in general, 
you know, good or bad. And I feel that with open armpits, especially while wearing aluminum free deodorant, they just don't last long. It's natural, I know, but I always like to smell fresh and with perfume on. Sometimes I even change at work and freshen up again. You know, we do have lockers and showers with the gym. Also, I don't even know where I would wear tops with shoulders out. I mean, even in the summer, I'm cold and unless I'm outside, I still have a cardigan on. In the office, it's definitely not appropriate. So long story short, I don't even bother looking at this style. It's an easy pass for me. Expensive skincare or custom feature skincare. What I'm referring to is products that are specific to one area of the body like the neckline or hands or under eyes for wrinkle, under eye for dark circle, under eye for brightness. Can we just have one under eye cream? They are coming up with more and more diverse products that all of a sudden we apparently need, but yet we were fine all our lives without it. I think most of us agree here that as we age, we look to simplify decisions, not overly complicate them. Now, I do realize that there are women out there who are searching for solutions to new problems that they didn't have before. But slowing down my biological clock, which is out of my control, is not on my top priority list. I aim to live a balanced, healthy life, and I'm really big on acceptance. Custom jewelry. The alternatives to expensive jewelry, the rich diversity of lab-created quality jewelry that will last for years makes jewelry buying so much more accessible. I stopped buying metal that doesn't last a long time as they tend to fade or lose coloration. Many people don't know that Costco online is a great place to find a bargain for jewelry. It's not sponsored. They're just like one of my favorite stores. They have affordable prices, a big variety for all budgets. I've been shopping there for years. Blazers are coats with metal buttons. They look too much like fast fashion to me and not to take away from brands that do offer elegant coats, which just so happen to have beautifully crafted metal buttons because we can generalize that all of the garments are the same but I think that the image of golden buttons is tarnished. There are plenty of alternatives that look elegant without having to second guess it. And speaking of golden buttons, embellishments or metal additions are next on my list. I find them cold and to me they seem low quality. I'm mostly concerned about the longevity of the clothes. How long is this going to last? Ladies, share in the comments below about your experience with metal embellishments. How long have they lasted for you? Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have any. I mean, two years ago, I purchased this leather moto jacket and it has a lot of metal. I don't think that we can avoid it fully. Sometimes it's just the look, like buckles, for example. Perhaps if you take care of them, then they will last longer. But for me, I just stopped buying them altogether. Unlined skirts and and dresses. This is a big one for me because I didn't pay a lot of attention until recently when I would do the walk test with tights and saw my sweater dress scrunched up in a ball in between my legs and I had to keep pulling on it and it's so unflattering to walk in heels all dolled up because we spend a lot of time putting together a great outfit to end up pulling on the dress as we walk. Not very ladylike. <laughs> the confidence level drops and and I've learned very fast not to wear that dress again, or so I thought. You see, my confusion was that I've worn this dress before without an issue. So what changed? The tights. I usually wear sheer nude pantyhose, and when in winter, I switch to the thicker opaque ones, which are matte and cling on to dear life. A good option is to wear a slip-on, which I don't have, but I'm looking into it in the future. It's definitely a detail I pay attention to now when I shop for dresses. If the slip is already built in, then the dress will drape around beautifully beautifully without any shift. One last thing to worry about. I hope you found my list of items I stopped buying useful. Share below what are you avoiding to buy and I will see you in my next video.